So one of the themes that I've been working on has been the concept of the floating bridge. The balance of, of the two forces. This concept of being in two places at the same time. One foot in heaven, one foot on earth. One foot in your divine self, one foot in your mundane self. Where you're connected to your partner and you're connected to yourself. If you're doing that in good balance, you're on the floating bridge. In my use of the terminology. And I'm sure there are people who would challenge my understanding of it. And there's a guy who trained with, with Osensei at the same time Bob did, named Henry Kono. They were kind of friends and, and still are, I believe. And uh, Henry Kono was purported to have asked Osensei, how come our Aikido doesn't look like your Aikido? And he said, because you don't understand yin and yang. And so the other way I've talked about this, this feeling, this quality of having this this sense if you've ever been around a couple that doesn't get along well. You know, and the thought of, you know, you're going out to dinner tonight with a couple that just, they're always somehow... Um, so if you can picture kind of the feeling you have being around someone like that, a couple like that, and juxtapose it against uh, if you've ever been around a couple that does get along really well. Has that really somehow supportive understanding, tonality, not that they never get irritated with each other, we're humans, but they sort of recognize that the irritation is their own in most cases, and, and if there is a problem, they, they work on it together to resolve it. They don't make one, per, you know, one person bad, one person good, both of them doing that to each other, and then we're back to the other couple again, right? Analogy work for everybody, yeah? So you got a couple that doesn't get along well, you got a couple that does get along well, and the feelings that you have around them, well, what I said is, when you're you know, everyone's made from a mother and a father. Uh, you have in you masculine and feminine forces or yin and yang. Everyone has positive and receptive forces. When your positive and receptive masculine and feminine aspects are at odds with each other, then being around you is like being around a couple that doesn't get along well. And most of us don't really want to. As a matter of fact, when I'm like that, I don't even want to be around myself. On the other hand, like I said, when you are in that state where your forces are in harmony, where there is kind of a, the male respects the power of the feminine, the feminine respects the power of the masculine, they work together to create new life or give birth to, then that's when the creativity happens. That's when this take musu, uh, martial art of divine creativity, begins to show up. The sense is, so if I get kind of one-sided and the other side's kind of weak, the, the masculine's really engaged and the feminine's not being counted, uh, I'm out of sorts. I'm a couple that's out of sorts. When I'm okay, the feminine's, the one that's not being active or something, is equally as val uh, valued and equally as experienced as the, the one that's active. And vice versa, the active one is actually listening to the other one. It was so great. He's just running around like you couldn't believe watching him now. Thank you. And uh, so how do, we, how do we do that? Well, I think if you notice for a minute, if you're a little more forward or a little more back as you're sitting here, my guess is your body starts making some little adjustments till it feels a little better. It's a little more of the couple that's getting along with each other. You don't have to teach it how to do that. You don't have to talk to yourself. Notice it and the system, like the bubble in the level, just shows you where you are. And if you get it right, it goes right to the center point. And you don't have to tell the bubble to move. It, it, it's automatic. The system automatically corrects what it can't correct with. Or it doesn't matter if the bubble's correcting if you're not looking at it put the level on, don't look at the bubble, and then go on and say, I guess it's level. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. But we do it in our lives all the time. So seeing that tendency to be forward or back, maybe you're one of those people, like me, who likes to talk all the time, or you're one of those people who you know, just don't like to speak up in a group. All that really matters is you feel like you're forward or back. You know, is your weight more on your knees or more on your feet? You know, do you feel like your, your weight's settling down or do you feel like you're kind of holding yourself up? Are the muscles doing it or are the bones doing it? So as you start to notice that, your body will make these corrections. It's always doing that. 
For most of us, it's a question of how far do you get off before you, you realize it. When you see someone who's overly aggressive, when you see someone who's overly receptive, their masculine and feminine aren't in harmony. They're not standing on the floating bridge. They're stuck on one side or the other. Live there if you want. Doesn't call me at all. I like the sense of strength and sensitivity standing on the floating bridge. Feeling and thinking together as one system, standing on the floating bridge, moving in harmony with the energies of the universe. So you're you as part of a larger system. And the two forces work together. And they create infinite forms of Aikido. Did you ever see that technique before? Yeah. All right, so that, thank you. There are a million variations like that that are going to show up. Once we, once we bring these two aspects into harmony. So, uh, for the next cycle, double check yourself. If you're newer, you probably won't be able to do it while you're training. But after you throw, double check. If you were going to stand like this for five minutes, would you make any corrections? And, you know, that was too forward, so I'll come back a little more. I can feel that, and I'm exaggerating a little to make it obvious, but that's too far back. And so I look for that place that's comfortable in both places, can go back when it needs to, can come in when it needs to, can listen when it has to, can speak when it has to. And it's okay. Proper listening, so that when you say something, it makes sense in relationship to what's being said. It's intentional to the conversation. It's not somehow all out of sorts uh, trying to run the world from that place. Another Taoistic phrase, when a man takes the world in hand, I fear there'll be no end to it. If you're doing your balancing of yin and yang, if you're, uh, let's do a punch here instead. If you're not trying to talk while they talk, but you're able to listen while they talk, you'll probably have a good conversation. If you are in that relationship, you can grow from it, they can grow from it. And I think this is why, you know, I devoted my life to Aikido. Uh, there are many aspects of it, but it's this sense that it's not really about winning and losing, it's about he said, winning means winning over the discord in your own mind. It's to accomplish your bestowed mission. When you uh, stop trying to please everybody else, when you stop resisting pleasing anyone else, when you're just here being yourself with everybody else and your natural self, the truth of who you are, your bestowed mission manifests. If we were all doing that, I think we would create a beautiful world. <laughs>